All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's video conference on the call. This morning, we have the offensive coordinator of the number two ranked Michigan Wolverines, Josh Geddes. Shortly after coach, we will welcome running back Blake Corum, wide receiver Mike Sanristil, offensive lineman Andrew Stover, and tight end Luke Schoonmaker. Uh, before we get started again, remember media attending the 2021 college football playoff semifinal at the Capital One Orange Bowl here in person are reminded to pick up their credentials at the official media headquarters in the Seven Isles Executive Boardroom at La Meridian Dania Beach at Fort Lauderdale Airport from December 27th through December 31st or at Hard Rock Stadium Media Will Call at the Southwest Gate on December 31st. And all of this information is on orangebowl.org slash pressbox. A recording of today's video conference will be available on the CFP media portal, and you can access it from www.orangebowl.org slash pressbox shortly after the press conferences conclude. We will send out links as soon as we're done. For today's uh, Zoom press conference, please keep yourself muted. Use the raise hand function if you would like to ask a question. I'll recognize you when it's your turn, and I'll unmute you, and then you can identify yourself and your affiliation. So with that said, I'll uh, turn it over to Coach Geddes for brief remarks, and then we'll open up for questions. Go ahead, Coach. Well, first of all, uh, I'd like to say happy holidays to everyone on this call. I hope everyone is well. Um, we're excited to be here at the Orange Bowl. Um, you know, our team is in, in great spirits right now. Um, we've had great practices. Uh, we're healthy. And we're excited about tremendous challenge, you know, being in the playoffs and uh, obviously going against a very talented uh, Georgia team and Georgia defense. Uh, and we're excited for the challenge. You know, uh, we know what's ahead of us. Uh, we know the opportunities we have, and most importantly, we believe in and, and we have tremendous confidence uh, in ourselves. And so um, we've had a great experience so far. Um, the Orange Bowl is a special place. Um, this is my third Orange Bowl I've been fortunate to be a part of, uh, one as a player. And, uh, you know, so it brings back tremendous memories for me throughout all of my visits here, uh, being a part of the Orange Bowl. And I can't tell you how excited we are to be here. All right, thank you, Coach. We will start the questions. Uh, first question to John Neo with the Detroit News. Go ahead, John. Hey, Josh. Uh, of all of Hassan's runs this year, I'm just wondering if you've got a favorite highlight or two that sort of sums up his ability and, and what he's meant to this offense. Yeah, great question, John. Uh, you know, Hassan is uh, he's everything to us. You know, we absolutely love him. Um, I don't know if you can actually list out one specific play uh, because he creates so many wild plays, you know, whether it's hurling guys or it's extra effort, you know, short yardage plays where he's, you know, running over defenders in the hole. Um, you know, he's a guy that, you know, when you talk about a physical back and how you want to build your backs, he's the exact prototype of what you want to build your running back room around. Um, he's done a tremendous job, you know, carrying the low for us. And really, you know, he had some tough tasks to, to go along or, uh, the midpoint of the season uh, when Blake was down and, and, and uh, Donovan was down. You know, we really put the load on his back and, and he carried us there for about three games you know, just being uh, the solo back. And so um, when you got a guy with his ability, his talent, his vision, his physicality, it makes him pretty complete. And so, um, you know, I, I wish we had had him around here for another four or five more years, uh, but we're really, really proud of what he's accomplished, everything that he's done to this point. Okay, next question, uh, Dennis Dodd. Go ahead, Dennis. Hey, Josh, congratulations on the broils, by the way. Um, what... How is Blake's foot? How has Blake's foot been? Uh, because against Ohio State and Iowa, he had some pretty key runs, but you, got, you appeared to spot him. Where, where is he with that right now? Uh, uh, thank you uh, for your initial comments there, Dennis. And, uh, you know, Blake's healthy. You know, we're a healthy team, and, and that's where we're fortunate. You know, um, you know, being able to take the last few weeks and get ourselves back to 100% because, you know, as everyone noticed, the last few weeks of the season, um, we were playing some really tough teams, but we had some bumps and bruises along the way. You know, certain players being out, but the good thing for us is – uh, the next man stepped up and was always ready. And so uh, we're excited now that we're finally back to full speed and, and healthy. Um, you know, just having great depth, you know, has allowed us to be in this position. You know, uh, other than, you know, the few weeks where we had to put a lot on the son's plate, we've been able to have great depth to have different guys step up, whether it's Blake, whether it's Donovan. Um, and so we're excited to finally get a chance to see a full speed, you know, Blake Corman. I think a little bit uh, of what people saw at him uh, in the Big Ten championship game was him kind of catching himself back up to full strength. And uh, he's ready to go. He's excited. And we're glad to have him back to, to 100 percent. All right, next question for Aaron McMahon. Go ahead, Aaron. Uh, 
Alex, you uh, you choked up a little bit uh, during your speech earlier this month when you were talking about Jim Harbaugh and the relationship you had with him. Could you elaborate a little bit on that and, and just the confidence he's shown in you as a as offensive coordinator and play caller, especially after the way things went last year? Yeah, you know, Coach Harbaugh has just been, you know, a tremendous supporter of me, you know, first of all, you know, allowing me to come to, you know, this just prestigious place, you know. Uh, Michigan's a special place. It's always been a job of mine that I've always admired uh, along the way, having, you know, coached in this conference and going against Michigan for so many years, the respect that I had for this program. And so um, when I was afforded the opportunity to come here as the coordinator, you know, I'm very thankful for Coach Harbaugh for believing in me and giving me that opportunity. But then along the way, you know, we've experienced everything. We've experienced the good times, the hard times, and the bad times. And obviously 2020 was challenging in so many different ways um, to our team, you know, to our offense. And, you know, for him, you know, that was important for me because, you know, the, the most important piece was when your head coach doesn't lose confidence in you, the players don't lose confidence in you. And our players never for once, never once lost confidence in me. Um, I never lost confidence in them. And, and, and we've persevered through everything. And so, um, you know, we did gain some valuable lessons along the way in 2020, but I think it's built this team to be the team that we are today. Okay, next question for Ralph Russo. Go ahead, Ralph. Morning, Josh. Um, I, I hate to use the word blueprint here, but Alabama finally had success. Somebody had success against Georgia. That hadn't been done all year. Is it helpful when you try to scheme against the team or maybe just from a confidence standpoint to actually see somebody have success against them or the things that you can take from that uh, anything that that helps when you when you see what Alabama did to Georgia's defense? Well, you know, I, it's hard to say blueprint because if it only happens one game in a year, it's uh, obviously didn't work too well for too many other people. But, uh, you know, it does give you a little bit of confidence. I mean, this is a uh, you know, there's there's no way around it. This is a very talented Georgia defense. Um, Dan Lanning has done a tremendous job leading this defense. Um, creating its own identity. And I think he's also put his own, you know, uh, additional flavor to this defense. It's not the same defense of during the Nick Saban days of Alabama, where you've seen Coach Smart uh, really evolve and grow this defense. And so um, they've done a tremendous job. They've got tremendous talent on the defensive uh, front and even in the back seven. And so um, we've got a tremendous challenge on our hands. And obviously we're a really talented offense. I mean, it's going to be a heavyweight matchup, you know, of two heavyweight teams offensively and defensively going to, going against each other on Friday night. Okay, next question, uh, Andrea Adelson. Go ahead, Andrea. Hey, Josh, along those lines, it feels like this may be a matchup of, of strength versus strength with the way you are physical and able to run the ball and how strong they are up front. Uh, what is it going to take for you all to be able to – to win those matchups against Georgia and uh, be the more physically dominant team? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it's going to uh, just take withstanding the momentum swings in the games. Obviously, there's going to be things that are positive that happen early on in the game. Then you're going to have to battle through adversity, whether things don't go your way. Um, but it's going to take, you know, it's going to take all four quarters. It's going to take 60 minutes. Um, as you talk about a heavyweight matchup, you know, it's about wearing down the opponent necessarily, not, not necessarily going out and striking a knockout. Uh, because both teams are going to respond, you know, early on in the game. And so for us, it's about sustaining, you know, success, you know, taking positive plays, obviously creating explosive plays. But even if we don't take or create explosive plays, just taking positive plays is going to be the key. Um, it's going to be a train wreck inside. I mean, it's, you know, two smash mouth teams kind of going against each other. Um, and endurance is going to play a big piece in that. You know, who's able to win the fourth quarter, who's able to win at the line of scrimmage late in the game is going to be key to, the, to who wins the game. Our next question for Angelique Changlis with the Detroit News. Go ahead, Angela. Josh, uh, two quick quarterback questions, please. I was just wondering how you think J.J. McCarthy has evolved this year, and, and also in terms of Cade, is there, is there, was there one game, is there a place you can pinpoint where you saw his confidence really, really sort of, uh, I don't know, magically appear? Yeah, start with the JJ question. Um, you know, I think once JJ started to play calm and relaxed, uh, you know, I think there was a part early in the year where, um, you know, when he felt like he needed to go in, he had to create the wild play and he had to create the exciting play. Um, but that's not necessarily the case. 
Um, but getting him to play within the system, getting him to play calm and relaxed. And he's really grown as a quarterback. He's such a phenomenal athlete and phenomenal thrower, but he doesn't have to go in and just, you know, throw the deep ball or create a play, but understanding that he can rely on the play calls and the players around him to create those plays. And he's done a tremendous job developing himself. And I think, you know, for him, uh, he can't have a better role model. Uh, to look up to than Cade McNamara because you see Cade who's a complete quarterback and you know Cade's done a tremendous job leading our team um, he's very smart in how he approaches everything in his preparation his leadership skills are phenomenal uh, and he's a guy that you know really makes everyone around him better because they have tremendous support and faith and belief in him and so Cade's done a tremendous job bringing JJ along and I think it's so important uh, that I must acknowledge when you have two players like Cade and JJ just the unselfishness of those two guys has allowed us to be where we are today. Because when you're going through a situation where you're playing, you know, multiple quarterbacks, that can either make or break your team. You know, it can either take one guy and, 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 and uh, you know, inflate him with confidence and obviously deflate another guy with, uh, of their confidence. And so those two guys have done a tremendous job just – handling everything that we've that we've done that we've put on their plate and leading our team and so uh, but Kate uh, specifically you know that's really kind of his DNA um, he he's a he's the old school junkyard dog he's going to scrap for everything um, you know he's going to outwork anybody and everyone that he possibly can and prepare himself at a very high level to lead this team and so we're very very fortunate um, that we have the type of quarterback room that we have there uh, and I think coach Weiss has done a tremendous job managing that room and creating an atmosphere in that room that's togetherness you know and I think that's really been the, the key to our success offensively is how cohesive everyone plays um, as a coordinator I don't have to deal with the issues of someone coming in asking for the ball or asking for for playing time because we got tremendous leadership on our offense. We got tremendous players and they've done a great job accepting everyone's role. And next question for Tim Reynolds. Go ahead, Tim. Hi, Josh. Tim Reynolds with the Associated Press here in Miami. Um, welcome, belatedly. Um, you have the unique perspective of having played in this game as well, of course. And, you know, the Orange Bowl always wants to make this a very fun experience for the kids. It's a business trip for you guys, and we're in the throes of a pandemic still. Where's the balance this week between making sure the kids enjoy themselves? Obviously, the work comes first, but also you got to be safe. How does all that kind of fit together this week? Well, I think the balance kind of gets a little bit thrown off when you when you hit the college football playoffs, right? So at uh, the Orange Bowl of my days are quite exactly the Orange Bowl of today uh, because it means just a little bit more when you're in the playoffs. Um, it's such a iconic bowl and legendary bowl. Um, the hospitality here is by far amazing. Um, it's 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 first class, uh, and so the events our, our kids were able to go on a uh, on a cruise last night. Um, we as coaches had a coaching staff reception where the food was amazing, um, but we got to constantly remind ourselves we're here for a reason. Uh, this is purely a business trip. Um, we're afforded the luxury of being in Miami in such a great hotel and have all the hospitality around us. Uh, but it doesn't matter if we're playing this game in Ann Arbor, you know, Athens or Miami, we're here for a reason. And the college football playoffs is that reason. And so uh, we've got to remain focused uh, because once you hit the playoffs, you're playing the best of the best. And so uh, as we know, we've got a tremendous challenge. We're excited and we're accepting of it. Uh, and we're looking forward to going out, displaying everything that we have on Friday night. Okay, next question is from Austin Meek. Go ahead, Austin. Josh, I believe you guys lead the nation in plays of 50 yards or more this season. What do you think has been the key to the number of explosive plays you've been able to generate? Explosive players, <laughs> number one by far. Um, you know, when you look at, you know, how we're creating those explosive players, it's getting the ball in the hands of explosive players. Uh, and, and so when you got guys like A.J. Henning, Blake Corum, Roman Wilson, Donovan Edwards, you know, those guys are going to create explosive plays, you know, and that was an area where we really emphasize increasing our team speed. Uh, and we're dynamic, you know, within our skill positions, whether it's tight ends, receivers, running backs, we've got some of the most dynamic players in all of the country. So, uh, you know, it doesn't take coaching at that point. It takes players. Uh, and our players have done a tremendous job executing assignments. They've done a tremendous job being explosive players and they're playing together. 
And that's the one thing that that's as a coach, where do we take tremendous pride is watching these guys going out there playing for each other, whether it's Mike Sanders still out in front of a, you know, Blake Corum touchdown with him and him and uh, him and JJ McCarthy leading the way. When you have that type of selflessness by a team, you can accomplish and, and, and do many things. And so we're very proud of the effort, the togetherness our offense has played with and overall as our team. And we're looking forward to continue that on. All right, we're going to take uh, two more questions here before we get the student athletes. Uh, next question from John Neal with the Detroit News. You there, John? Oh, sorry about that. Hey, uh, uh, Josh, I, d I just wonder, um, the, the tight ends obviously have been more involved, um, but in addition to the pass catching, can you talk about Eric All's blocking ability and what that's meant for this offense? Yeah, specifically Eric, but I'll talk specifically for the group too because they're the unsung heroes of our offense. You talk about what's the most important position uh, in this offensive system, it's the tight ends. They allow us to do everything that we want to do. They allow us to be the physical downhill run, run game team. We ask those guys to go out and catch passes, but also protect for passes. And so, you know, they're really the Swiss Army knife to get us going. Uh, and, and really that group is led by Eric Hall and Luke Schoonemaker. You know, both of those guys are, are, are you know, talented players. And you see him, Joel Honifer get out there and Carter Seltzer in the mix. Uh, but when you ask about Eric, you know, he's a guy that tremendous talent. He's so athletic. He's got tremendous ball skills and catch radius. Uh, and he's got one of the hardest heads on the team. He'll go in there and knock you out. I mean, he will throw everything he has in there uh, to, to get a block. And when you've got a guy that plays with that type of physicality at the H-back position and that type of precision and route running, and he's able to create separation with his speed, you know, he's really a dynamic threat to opposing defenses because how do you guard him? You know, do you put a nickel back on him or do you play base defense? And so um, when you have the type of tight end room that we have, you know, it makes you complete as an offense. And I think Coach Jay Harbaugh has done a tremendous job just developing that room as well. Um, because even early on in the season when they weren't getting all the attention or of the catches, those guys were playing selfless football. They were going out. We were asking those guys to, to make some tough blocking assignments in the run game and never once did they complain about getting the ball. So it's really been, um, it's really been pleasing to see them have success later in the year in the passing game because they deserve it. Those guys are tremendous assets to our team and to our offense, and we couldn't be who we are without them. Our last question for coach from Isaiah Hull. Uh, go ahead, Isaiah. Hey, Josh. So uh, there's been a lot of talk about momentum and things of that nature about trying to keep momentum and having this layoff. But uh, Cade McNamara said when you guys arrived that he's really liked what he's seen in practice to this point. What, what have you seen from, from the team in the kind of lead up? And then obviously you had a practice yesterday. How do you feel that your offense has performed so far? Yeah, I think the challenge was after that we won the Big Ten championship game. If we could just bottle ourselves up and then ship ourselves to, you know, Miami and just play the next day, then we were ready to go. And so um, leading up to our ball practices, we had phenomenal practices back at campus. Uh, and then the next challenge came, okay, would we be able to carry that over with all the excitement, with all the different distractions that could potentially come, you know, with bowl preparations down in Miami? And I'll tell you what, I was blown away yesterday. Uh, the type of urgency, the effort, seeing how fast our guys fly around. You know, it's, it's different for us because we're coming south. So, you know, when you put us out here in warm weather and we're able to run around nice and fast, we look different. You know, we're used to practicing in 30 degree, 20 degree weather right now, wrapped up in clothes. And so uh, just having the great weather, having a great surface, the practice facility at, uh, uh, at, at the uh, DNR Stadium uh, was unbelievable or International Miami Stadium, I think called Dan, I uh, can't remember the exact name, but it was unbelievable. Um, just was a fast surface, allowed our guys to fly around and execute, playing with tremendous confidence. And so, you know, I think the maturity of our team and the leadership of our team obviously led us to have a great season, but it's also prepared for us to have a great night on Friday. And so we couldn't be more pleased with the effort that our guys are, are playing with and their attention to detail. All right. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate it. Thank you all. Take care. All right. We will uh... – now bring in uh, Blake, Mike, and Luke are all going to join us together. So again, just uh, raise your hand if you have a question, and um, I will call on you and let us know your affiliate, and you can ask a question. There's three. There's three. There's three. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good, hey guys. How's it going? How you doing? Okay. All right, we're going to open up the questions. Uh, first question for players from Dennis Dodd. Go ahead, Dennis. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Dennis. You can ask. No, go ahead. I, I didn't have my hand up. Oh, okay. All right. Next, uh, Andrea Adelson. Go ahead, Andrea. Uh, yeah, uh, for, for Blake, can you just talk about how you're feeling right now headed into this matchup and also what you see out of Georgia's defensive line? You've obviously been in physical games before, but you know what it's going to take specifically against them to be able to win that matchup. You know, I feel personally, I feel great. Uh, I feel like my ankle is finally back. I feel like I have, you know, my cutting ability, my speed, my top end speed, my burst. I feel like I have all of that back. Um, you know, Georgia's pretty stout. They're a stout defense. They have a good front seven. Um, but I mean, we just got to continue doing what we do. You know, there's no there's no need to change anything. We've had a wonderful year. You know, our offensive line has done great. Our tight ends have done great. Our receivers, everyone's done great. So just continue to prepare uh, and watch a film on them and um, and just keep keep going. All right, next question, Bob Wojnowski. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, for, for any of the players, I'm, I'm curious if your take on the Georgia defense and has been branded as one of the most dominant of all time in physicality and everything else. And you guys have shown your own level of physicality. Do you Are you kind of interested to see what it's all about, what they're all about, and how your guys' physicality matches up with theirs? Uh. I'll take one take. I'll take it. Uh yeah, you know, <clears throat> like you just said, they have they're their dominant defense, but um, you know, we we ourselves have a really good offense. And, you know, physical physicality is the brand of football we play here. Um, you know, that's just the model we have on, on this offense is, is we call it PSP, which is uh physical, smart, precise. And you know, as you see, the first word is physical. Um, that's just how we play football here. That's that's what we want to do, that's what we instill into our guys. And um, that's just how it's going to be in this game. Of course, it's going to be one of those physical games. Um, and it's going to come down to, you know, the most dominant uh, side of the ball winning. Um, and this, that's how we're attacking this game. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question for Rainer Saban. Go ahead, Rainer. Uh, yes, uh, um, all, for all three of you, can you guys can talk about the uh, uh, the uh, evolution of Josh Gaddis and especially how he's uh, kind of embraced also the use of the tight ends and the offense? He just talked about that. Yeah, no, I think um, we've just been able to grow our room so much. Um, obviously, just guys that, can, that we can do so much. Um, and Coach Gaddis has done a great job with – getting us all involved and um, so many different ways to attack defenses. So it's been a pleasure to play for him and um, we just accept anything he asks us to do. So it's been fun. Okay, next question from John Neo. Go ahead, John. It was for, for really all three of you, I guess. Uh, of all of Hassan's runs this year, I just wondering if you've got a favorite highlight uh, that sort of sums up his ability or, or what he's all about. Uh, my favorite run that Hassan did this year was probably uh, the Nebraska run where he jumped dude running, a, you know, full stride. Mm -hmm. I thought that showed it, you know, his explosion, you know, speed that he got. Mm -hmm. um, that was probably one of my favorites. I like, I like all the hurdles uh, in general. I mean, anytime he's going over somebody, I think everybody gets excited for that. Definitely. Uh, <clears throat> I feel like you could just look at Hassan's runs and just, you know, be amazed by all of the hurdles and whatnot. But what can't go unnoticed is when he's when he looks stopped in the backfield and he's still pushing and gets those two, three extra yards that we need for a first down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the 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 good looking plays are always fun to look at as highlights, but you know, the real the real the real eye for football will never let those uh those plays go unnoticed. Okay, next question, uh Ralph Russo. Go ahead, Ralph. Good morning, guys. Um I, I guess I'll direct this to Mike, but feel free if the other two want to jump in here. 
Um, Georges has 12 games of film where it gave up almost nothing and one game of film where it got sliced apart. Does it help at all when you start breaking down film to see them actually have a bad game? Does it give you any kind of, you know, maybe schematically or just confidence to see them having breakdowns as opposed to 12 weeks of just mashing people? Um, I would just say that regardless, even if uh, they didn't, you know, if last game didn't go that way for them, I feel like however we looked at it, we would just find ways, um, you know, through film, find different ways to expose um, open areas of the field, uh, find ways to, you know, create uh, good runs in the run game. Um, you know, Coach Gaddis does a great job coming up with game plans for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, we do a great job ourselves of believing in the game plan and just sticking to doing what we do really good on our offense. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I guess it, it definitely helps um, just, you know, seeing that uh, a team that kind of has a style of offense that we have as well, um, you know, going in there and doing what they did. Um, and it, I wouldn't say we, uh, you know, <clears throat> we didn't need them to do that, but, you know, just looking at the film, we understand, you know, where they can be attacked and we're just going to do, you know, our best job to uh, keep attacking those areas. Yeah. And off of that, I mean, we're just all excited for the opportunity too. I think the past few weeks of um, we've all, really gotten into it and and have stayed uh excited so we're excited um for the, this opportunity that they're giving us definitely and okay, next question is for david hale go ahead david uh hey i guess this is mostly for mike but i guess any of you guys could answer um I, i'm curious when you first start working with Cade as a QB did it take some getting used to to see that sort of release point that he has and and his um you know mechanics and throwing the ball and and has there been any times during the year where you've thought like how did he get the ball out with like so much traffic around him because he does sort of vary that that sort of sidearm delivery and um and keep plays alive that way uh KK might not be as mobile as A-Rod but Sometimes I call him, like, I joke around with him. I call him, like, baby A-Rod just because, you know, the way he moves around in the pocket. Um, yeah, he just – he does a great job of, you know, working in the offseason, uh, whether that's, you know, ball placement, delivery, whatever it is. Um, since we both came in together the, our freshman year of 2019, I've always had a connection with Cade, and it's just – it continues to grow and get stronger on and off the field, so – um, I feel like Kay's, Kay's doing a great job for us right now. Yeah, th he, he's definitely separated himself from others just with what you're saying with the arm angles and everything. I think it's pretty special if a quarterback can do that. Um, so, he, yeah, he, he's definitely separated himself by being able to have those different angles. And um, watching it after in film is like, yeah, it's, it's legit. Yeah, another thing is he's a field general. Like, he runs our offense, so he makes every, every makes sure it's everyone straight and all of that. So, uh, I mean, he's the leader of the offense, so he's great. And next question is from Dennis Dodd. Go ahead, Dennis. Okay. Hey, for any of you guys, uh, how would you describe this offense in that you guys pride yourselves on being physical, and yet some of the metrics shows, you know, you guys are as explosive as any team out there in certain categories? I mean, I feel like uh, we're a complete offense. I feel like we're physical. We're elusive. You know, we can run up the middle, run to the outside. We can throw deep balls, throw short screens. We can do everything, I feel like. I feel like Coach Gaddis comes up with great plans, uh, great ways to get everyone the ball. And no one is selfish. You know, everyone wants each other to eat. And um, and we play for each other. And when you do that, I mean, great things happen. So I feel like we're just a, a great offense that can do everything. Definitely. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like <clears throat> the physicality or the explosive comes – after the physicality uh, in terms of, you know, the O-line creating holes for guys like Blake, Hassan, Donovan, um, tight ends as well, a part of the blocking. And then receivers is blocking downfield to help the explosive plays continue. Um, and then that just, you know, that leads into the pass game. You know, physical allows Kate, the physicality of the offensive line allows Kate to have, 
time back there in the pocket. Um, you know, clean pockets allows him to have seven on seven vision, um, deliver balls the way he wants to. Um, and then just, you know, that's just, that's just how we like to do it. It's just physical. And next question is from Ryan Zook. Go ahead, Ryan. Hey, this is for, for all you guys. What do you guys do the night before a game to, to prepare? And it does, and does that change at all uh, when, when the stakes get higher, especially for a game like this? I mean, like, are you asking, like, as a team or, like, person? Personally. Oh, I mean, for me, I mean, I stay the same. Uh, you know, I, I like chilling. I like uh, maybe watching a movie or, or listening to some music, really just zoning in, thinking about what I'm going to do the next day. Um, and really just getting my mind right. And, I mean, that's what, that's what I kind of do before a game. Yeah. Uh, for myself, I say I just – I keep – I do the same thing. Uh, it doesn't matter what the game is. Um, I like to joke around a lot. So whether that's on game day or whether that's on Monday, um, I'm a, that, that, that's just who I am. I'm going to joke around with you. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to just bring good energy, good vibes, make sure everybody's energy is real high. That's how I like to do it. Um, and, you know, I just – before bed, I do envision plays or, you know, picture what I'm going to do in certain moments when my uh, when my number gets called and just making sure that I am locked in. But, um, yeah, I'm going to just keep it cool. That's how I like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same as these guys. Just the night before, uh, taking my mind off of things and, and just, yeah, being around everybody too. Um, I love – usually we'll, we'll have a movie as a team or um, – something together so i think being with everybody before uh can help alleviate uh any kind of stress or anything you have before and then when the time comes yeah everybody locks in all right last question for student athletes uh david hale go ahead oh, i'm sorry i still have my hand up from before i'm all good oh, okay all right Uh, Ralph, do you still have, a, you have another question, Ralph? Uh, yeah, you know, I'll take the shot, actually. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Luke, you mentioned, um, Josh had mentioned about using the tight ends. That's the most important thing in this offense. Um, do you know, I guess the best way I can describe, ask this is, is it harder to throw to the tight ends? In other words, like scheming to get tight ends open, team, uh, getting uh, teaching quarterbacks to find the tight end because they tend to be in the middle of the field. Is mm. there something about getting the ball to the tight end that takes a little extra expertise? Um, honestly, no. I, I think, uh, and that just goes to our abilities, um, our athleticism. And um, I, I think just because we, we can move so well, and, and again, Coach Gaddis does a great job with, that game planning with the quarterbacks. And um, I think it's uh, as similar as receivers, um, just kind of being able to get us open. And um, we can make that happen because of how uh, well we play and how and, and our abilities too. So, yeah. All right, guys, thank you very much. We appreciate the time this morning. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, that concludes Michigan's press conference. Just as a reminder, you can refer to orangebowl.org slash pressbox for all credential pickup and additional information. Uh, thank you. And uh, tomorrow morning, we will have Michigan offense at 8 a.m., followed by Georgia's defense afterwards. Thanks. Enjoy the rest of your day.